Greetings everyone, software joke about my upload schedule here. For this video I engaged in the esoteric practice of digging through Steam in search of obscure games that I can exploit for content. Here's some of what I found. First, the Swords and Sandals Spartacus, a game from 2019 with a whopping 19 reviews at the time of writing this. It's a retro action platformer and a departure in style from the classic Swords and Sandals games. You play as Spartacus, legendary Thracian gladiator, leader of the Third Roman Slave Revolt and a pioneer of the T-Poles, as he cuts his way through legions of Roman goons in an attempt to change the course of history. It's a game that oozes style, both thanks to its pixel graphics and Castlevania-inspired soundtrack. Part of the game's charm lies with its simplicity. The game is played with a total of 7 buttons, and the only way your character changes through the course of the game is with stat increases that can be purchased at the end of each level. Of course, simplicity comes with its disadvantages. First of all, dying at the end of a level means potentially losing all the treasure you've collected. This often means you cannot upgrade your character and can lead to serious power creep. The game can also be seriously buggy at times, with floor clipping being a common cause of death. It's somewhat localized and can be played around, but needless to say, you shouldn't really have to. Even more annoying is what happens after you beat the Senate's golden boy, Crassus. This is around the point where most players would expect the game's credits to roll, but instead you die, get sent to the underworld and meet Jupiter. You're then informed that you have to go back and beat every single stage of the game all over again, but with the difficulty jacked up. This whole half of the game feels like it's padding for time to prevent refunds and should really have been saved for hard mode for second playthroughs. Much like Spartacus himself, I'm slightly at cross with how unpolished this game is, but I don't really blame the developers considering the all-time peak of 3 players. I wouldn't really suggest buying the game at full price, but it's around the price of a Dooner kebab when it's on sale, and I can't really insist that we've gotten more enjoyment out of that than out of this game, so take that any way you will. Moving on, West of Dead is a game that most would probably argue doesn't fit the obscure criteria. I agree, but unfortunately for you, I already played it and want to talk about it. The game is an indie action roguelite with a unique art style that takes place in hell. Oh look, a bingo! The short version of the story is that you're a sheriff from 19th century Wyoming who got killed while investigating a cult. Now your murderer has also died and is cloaking up purgatory, and it's up to you to stop him. The game has a solid soundtrack that does an excellent job of selling you purgatory's eerie atmosphere, and the main character is voiced by the legendary Ron Perlman. It looked like a house of worship, but God... God had no place here. It plays like a top-down cover-based shooter, which feels nice and works well with the western setting. The gunfights are slow-paced but enjoyable and clearing rooms is very satisfying. Your character grows stronger throughout each run by getting stat increases and higher level weapons. These upgrades appear to have diminishing returns, but they take your current stats rather than your starting ones into account, so in practice they actually don't. The game is divided into stages, and while the arrangement of rooms in each stage is randomized, pretty much everything else is predetermined, making encounters feel repetitive. It tries to remedy this by giving you the option of progressing through alternative, more difficult routes on subsequent runs, but they are often not worth doing as the loot from them is easily replaceable. This issue is heavily exacerbated by the lack of gear variety. You see, most roguelikes are designed with the idea of making each run feel as distinct as possible through hundreds of different possible pickups and upgrades that can be used in a near infinite amount of build combinations. In West of Dead there are a lot of weapons you can pick up, but in practice it's actually just three guns with a bunch of surface level changes like extra bullets in the magazine or damage over time. You don't really get to be especially creative either, since the weapons have levels, meaning any new weapon you find is usually just a straight upgrade to whatever you have. In my opinion, this game didn't really have to be a roguelike. The story is neither complex nor long enough, the weapons don't have enough variety and most enemies are functionally the same, and it probably would have been much better off as a short story game with no permadeath element. Overall, I don't really hate West of Dead. I mean, I'm disappointed, but at the end of the day it still has a few things going for it. Unfortunately, I still can't recommend this game, especially since it shares a price tag with what is probably its main inspiration, Hades. Regardless, it often goes on sale for relatively cheap, so if you want to try it out despite my recommendation, well, be my guest. In fact, by the time this video goes up, both games should be on sale, so if you really want to try them out, you can check them out on Steam. Not that I would really recommend it. Either way, you can subscribe to my channel and you will hear from me eventually.